Hi, right, my friend. Thank you. So it's been nearly two months since motor coaches in Maine have been able to leave and take people to places. It's another industry hurting during the coronavirus pandemic, but bus companies are hoping to have their concerns finally heard. They're hoping for that to happen this week. Our Sean Stackhouse live in Kennebunk this morning to explain how exactly they plan to go about doing that. Good morning, Sean. Lee, good morning. Well, buses will be hitting the road today without passengers after they've been sitting idle for roughly two months. And you can see some of the buses behind me. We're here live at the Kennebunk Service Plaza, and these buses will be hitting the road heading to Washington, D.C. And that's where they'll be connecting with more than 800 other buses from across the country as they'll be participating in a rolling rally asking for assistance for the busing industry. Now, other areas of transportation have received aid as part of passing stimulus bills, but the motor coach industry hasn't. Now in Washington, they're hoping to have their voices heard as they call on Congress to provide $15 billion in grants and loans and modifications to the Economic Injury Disaster Loan and Payment Protection Program. Local business owners in Maine say they need help here and across the nation. The industry um, across the country is really just going to need some assistance in order to get through this, especially if we're talking about uh, no summer and no fall, because if, if that happens, we're right back into winter when November rolls around, and that's right back into slow season. Um, and, and companies companies across the country will have trouble staying staying ahead of that. Now, this rally is organized by the American Bus Association and the United Motor Coach Association, and buses from Maine are meeting here at the Kennebunk Service Plaza, as you can see behind me, and they'll be hitting the road and heading to Washington, D.C. today, where they will participate in that rolling rally across the, uh, the Capitol tomorrow starting at 1030 a.m. Live in Kennebunk this morning, Sean Stackhouse, New Center, Maine. Okay, Sean. Thank you. Stores in 12 of Maine's 16 counties have started to reopen to some walk-in customers. That says Governor Mills' rural reopening plan got underway yesterday. People who work at Lisa Marie's Made in Maine gift shop in Bath, for example, say they're excited to have their doors open again. Following CDC guidelines, the store has installed protective glass at the register, placed hand sanitizer around the store, is requiring customers to wear face coverings, and only allowing five customers inside the store at once. The store manager says they'll learn as they go and adapt safety measures accordingly. It's something that, you know, might be subject to change a little bit as we do start welcoming customers and we are absolutely ready to adapt and make sure that everybody feels safe. So like the, the measures that we've taken now, if they're not enough, we'll double down to make sure that everybody, all of our employees, our family, our customers, our neighbors and friends do feel safe when they come in. For now, Made in Maine is still offering curbside pickup, too, for customers who feel more comfortable shopping that way. And as for the counties not included in the rural reopening plan, they'll have to wait at least until June 1st for stores to reopen. That's because there is evidence of community spread in those areas. We're talking about York, Cumberland, Penobscot, and Androscoggin counties. Now that some of Maine is starting to reopen, Maine CDC Director Dr. Nirav Shah says that he is keeping an eye out for a spike in cases of COVID-19. Any type of movement here toward any kind of reopening may involve some degree of risk. We can't quantify what that risk is. It's very difficult to know whether by opening up this particular store in one particular county, there is an appreciable increase in risk. Dr. Shaw says Maine is expected to expand testing later this week, and that will give epidemiologists a better idea of how many cases the state is really dealing with.